It's time for the Home Server Show. It's episode number 194, recorded on Wednesday, August the 22nd. This is the Home Server Show, and it's with your host, David McCabe, Jim Collison, and John Zadler. Hello, we are back for another episode of the Home Server Show. It's the podcast for the home server and home media enthusiast. We talk about anything pertaining to home storage with a slide edge to Windows Home Server. We also cover home media streaming, mobile, and tech in general. Pretty much anything that has batteries or plugs into the wall, we're going to be talking about it. I'm your host, David McCabe. Tonight, I'm joined by the average guy. He's a Windows Home Server MVP, Mr. Jim Collison. Hey, Jim. Hey, Dave. How are you? Good evening to you. You know, I say the average guy. I'm not cutting you down or anything. No, we, no, that's that's, we that's perfect. You at average guy TV. I am the average guy. All right, you are the average guy. Also, we have that server modification master, Mr. Dremel, John Zadler. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jim. Hey, John. All right. Well, we're back. It's number one ninety four, and I I think we had a little contest in the forums to guess when episode two hundred was going to drop. I wonder if anyone... Uh, Anybody even close? That. We're getting close. Yeah. I wonder if we could uh, line this up and time it to be at the meetup. Oh, that'd be awesome. Do you have any you have any dates on that yet, or are you still kind of kicking that around? Speaking of meetup, let me start my calendar. I, I'm sorry to do this to you guys in, the, uh, in your car listening right now. Month, let's go over to October. I'm thinking... Let's see. How about somewhere around? I think. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> it's in October. How's that? Yeah, sometime in October. I was supposed to have this assigned, and things just things are crazy. How about the twentieth, the thirteenth of the twentieth? Let's throw that out there. There is a post in the forums homeservershow.com forward slash forms. We are going to be meeting in the greater Indianapolis area. That is Indianapolis, Indiana. Probably on the north side. So if you uh, are anywhere within, I don't know, 800 miles, we do expect you to attend. 800? 800. Jim, how far are you? I don't know. I'll have to look it up. I'll do that while you're talking. Okay. So if you're within the circle of Jim then we do expect you to attend. I and talked to I talked to Lux the other night, and uh, I may swing through St. Louis and pick him up. So we just got to figure out how to do that so we can get that him That would be too. mighty fine of you. What a home server guy. Yeah. Well, it's right on the way. Yeah. Chris so, Lux, um, I, he, he podcasted with us oh, about episode 40 to 100, 101 and some change, maybe like that. So um, what we do at these meetups... Once I have a date, I will uh, I will work with uh, some sponsors, and we'll have uh, some gear to show, and some gear to give away, and uh, we record a live show. It's uh, a bunch of geeky guys. Uh, last year, Vinyl Freak brought his uh, HTPCs that uh, he's got built in an old timey radio looking thing. I think that's what it was, wasn't it? VF. Um, we had. Uh, a lot of guys show up, and it would be really cool to see you at the meetup if you can swing that. Check in the forums. We have a post going. You can vote for the day that you can uh, make it, and think of those days in October because I'm thinking 20th or 27th, somewhere around there. I mean, I could probably swing the 13th, but uh, later in the month probably probably a lot better. 693 miles if I pick up Lux. So 700, let's say 700. If you're within 700 miles and you're not coming and you give us this lame excuse about driving, <laughs> it's too far. It's an absolute requirement if you are within 700 miles. I can't figure out Windows 8. It's too far. <laughs> All right. That was, uh, we'll talk more. Just, just hang with us. We'll talk yeah. more about the meetup. Tonight we're going to do a little bit of follow-up. I've got some issues on that UPS that um, we talked about. Not necessarily issues, but uh, some follow-up, some FU follow-up. Uh, I would like to talk with you about, uh, I sent this out via Twitter, where you keep your server. 
plain and simple, where do you keep your server? We're going to talk about that. We're also going to be talking about some 2012 essentials. We've got some uh, news for you there. We've also got a couple of um, couple of add-ins we're going to be talking about. And uh, it's back to the Windows Home Server portion of uh, this podcast, which we have been really brief on uh, in the past couple of months just because of lack of news and essentials taking over. All right, guys, some follow-up. Now, Jim, you were you were a party to this because I sent out a tweet last week about my UPS issue, and I sent I, I I can't remember what I said. I like I was buying a new one, and I didn't want to buy APC. I'll be honest with you, this APC failed prematurely failed me, in my opinion, and I did not want to repurchase that brand. I thought I would go with something else. So I get to the local fries, and it's pretty much an APC warehouse. And money talks, right? Too with APC. I mean, they're not the bottom of the barrel, but they're they're not terribly expensive if you're getting them on a deal. Yeah. So I had a nine hundred, and I was looking to get around the one thousand range, and I ended up getting pretty much that. You know, it they didn't have a whole lot of choice. Uh, what's the other? And you got a fifteen hundred, right? Yeah, I did. On that, and I have the thousand, so you 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 stepped up a little bit. I mean, you, you that can th- that thing can run about four PCs for a few minutes. A few minutes. <laughs> well, I'm hoping to get more than well, that. No, right. Um, I'm just saying, though. Right. Yeah. I mean that uh, that'll that'll stretch it out for a while, especially if you got some low power CPUs. So, I um, mean, you don't plug your monitors into it. Yeah, I'm gonna be running the home server, probably the router, a switch, anything I need to stay powered up. And uh, um, I have. Smaller UPSs. I can't read it. It's too dark down there. But those little, those little blocks. You know those little block ones that you just mm-hmm. kind of sit on the floor. They're not the tower. Pretty much kind of the one PC UPS. Those go all throughout the house. Right. So I sent out this tweet and I said, I don't even remember what I said, but um, the APC guys picked up on it and they were pretty much clueless to the fact that I that I said I had issues with a previous APC but now I have a new one and they they tweeted back oh doesn't that one look nice have a nice day I, I did see that I was I didn't I wasn't following everything real closely on that but I thought that's kind of odd yeah most of the times uh, those guys that uh, troll uh, Twitter for their own name especially the companies that, you know, support their product. They say, hey, you know, contact us offline. We'll work with you on your on your dead box. And uh, there was none of that. Of course, I didn't just come out and say, hey, this thing sucks. I'm trying to find a new one. I just said I had issues with the older one, but I ended up going with APC again. So I'm trying to learn from some of my mistakes. One thing I couldn't remember is when I bought the thing, when I put it into service, and when I swapped the battery out. So I sent out another little photograph of a, I put a little yellow, it's like a note card, and I taped it to the side of the UPS, and I put date of service, and I put the date on there, and I put some blanks for when I uh, will probably be replacing the battery, because it's just inevitable that you need to replace the battery. And Every single APC unit that I've owned tells me when the battery needs to be replaced because it either shuts down or starts whining or or doing something crazy. So I want to remember these dates. So I just taped a piece of paper to the side and I'm going to write down the battery change dates. At least I I know. You know, when I'm seeing old, I'll know that if I look down there and say, wow, that UPS has been running for three years. I've never changed the battery. Maybe I should look into that and do some self-test. You know, it'd be nice. They have some software that comes with it, and it would be nice if you could just put that date in, and then it would flash on the front screen for you. That you know, so you wouldn't have to put a crappy, you know, yellow sticky on the side of your brand new UPS. I don't trust them. I don't trust them, Jim. <laughs> you think they it'll would move? reset that? <laughs> it would move as the as the time went along. Yeah, I pulled up the tweet that they sent back from APC uh, Schneider Electronics that said, uh, "What a beautiful new unit!" And with a wink and a smile. We also hope you thoroughly enjoy this one. I thought you had complained to them and they'd, ish, they'd shipped you out a new one. And, yeah. I, and that's what I thought the reference was, is that they had replaced. I'd heard you had a few issues. And so 
I thought they'd shipped you a new one. No, no dice, huh? No dice. No dice whatsoever. And I had tweeted, I, I've had this APC for a year. I haven't had any trouble, but that, that's just been my experience. It's working. Yeah, and it, it's, it's luck of the draw. So I did get a pretty good unit. It's uh, 1,500. I can't remember the wattage on that thing, but it's, it's ginormous. The battery is huge. They have made some improvements in it. Uh, one thing that I did like about this 1,500, it's 1,500G or something like that. You know when you get it home, you take it out of the box, you have to plug the battery in, right? Well, here's a good thing and a bad thing. The battery, all, I, I slid it out, and I was expecting to find those dangling wires that you have to slide in and connect, where there wasn't one. On the battery itself was a little connector, in molded into the battery, a little connector. And all you had to do was flip it over mm. and slide it in. And it lines up, makes contact, and you're done. Well, the good thing is for the average guy, I mean, there's, there's no sparks, you know, there's, there's nothing funky going on. You don't have to connect anything. You just flip it over and push it in. But I'm kind of wondering, in the future, am I going to have some issues with a replacement battery? Because there are companies out there that do sell replacement batteries um, kind of at a discount. So I'm kind of wondering, am I going to see... You know, what, what's going to be my mindset in a, a year or two years from now? I'm going to have to probably buy the official APC battery and pay the extra 20 bucks. So, Yeah, you know, and they might have a, they might have a replacement for you. I mean, that's just, a, that's just a cast in the plastic, and, and uh, I think they could probably change that over pretty easy. So, I did think it was, a good, it was a good, I don't know, experience, you know, unboxing it and sliding in, boom, I was done. I like this is the first UPS that I've had with the little digital screen where you can see the load on it and the runtime remaining. I do think that's pretty cool. I hope I can I can trust that. And everything is up and running just fine. So Dave, speaking of Sparks, uh, and and John Stutzman just mentioned this in chat. You see that post today? Um uh, from one of the listeners whose uh, box uh, caught on fire. <laughs> I did. Box. I put that in the show notes. My server yeah. caught on fire. If you have not seen this, you need to get out to the forums, homeservershow.com forward slash forums, and just just look for my server caught on fire. You will find it. And uh, did you read that post, Jim? I did. It's long and lengthy, too. He, he spends lengthy. quite a bit of time talking about it, yeah. And I'm surprised that he he's back up and running. From what I could understand, the the motherboard was fine. Everything else was fine. It's just like it sounds like a connector shorted on the end and then got heated up and pulled itself down some wires. Of course, those connectors, those black ones, especially those SATA connectors, will just smoke like a mother. I mean, they they, they and they stink and it's oh. horrible. I mean, it's like burning an army man, right? Can you imagine <laughs> the, the chemicals that were uh, expelled yeah. in this guy's house? It doesn't take much to you know to, to make that plastic go, and so so what I bet happened is the wires in there touched, created a spark, which created a little bit of flame. It got going, and as it started burning, the wires came apart, stopped the fire, and you know, and, and it was you know done at that point. Um, but burning one of those SATA connectors or two of those, whatever it was in there, is enough to you know coat your hard drives and and, right. and that yeah and that such so. Yeah, he's really lucky. Uh, we had uh, some uh, electrical work done here in the house, so I'm now officially up to code in the house, and I had some lines run just for the studio area, which is really nice. nice, so I'm up to code. But uh, he pulled one of the boxes that I had burnt out about six months ago, and it had caught fire on the inside. Oh, and nice. it, the, the electrical box uh, had stopped the fire. And so it did. That's why, guys, that's why when they have code, you know, when your city has code ordinances, that's why they have it. Because it keeps you from burning your house down. You literally so, could have burnt your yeah, house down. No, it should have burned down. And any other, if that would have been in those plastic, in one of those plastic ones or anything like that, it would have burned the house down for sure. And uh, this one, um, the metal stopped it. And so, yeah, make sure you're. You don't want to mess around with the power, Dave. You, know, you don't want to mess. You don't want to mess with that stuff. Come on, I'm a home electrician. <laughs> I do it all the time. No more home builds. I thought I was day. too. I thought I was too until I had this electrician come over and tell me all the things I had done wrong. And you're just like, okay, I'll never wire again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So yeah, uh, it was not cheap. 
but we're all rigged up here, so it's it's good. We'll be making. I'll be I'll be going through my my server area, my rack area this weekend, and actually moving all the power back over and trying to you know you know you have that jumbled mess behind all there of just cables going everywhere. And then you were talking UPS. One of the things I do is run a long extension up to my my router and modem are all up on the wall up here, and I run a power um, a metal. Um, power strip up to it and then I plug everything in and then that gets its own power or that gets its own backed up um, plug on the UPS and that way if if the power goes down I guarantee my internet stays up my you right. know, my router stays up and all that stuff so that's a it's one way of pooling all those things together and make sure that um, you don't have in, in especially here we get those quick power downs and power back up well if you lose yeah. your router for a minute you know you're gonna spend 30 seconds, 45, 50 seconds waiting for that thing to come back. So that yeah, just that's a on. pain. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then I come out with a second um, metal uh, power strip, and just the PCs get plugged into that. And so that uh, usually the, the, and then these APCs have a load meter on the front. So you can kind of see, hey, where am I at with the load on this box? And make sure you're not. So I fire all the PCs up. At once, put a load on them, and then make sure I'm not overtaxing my my UPS. I have yet to really get going in this new house that I'm, I'm in, and uh, we're going to be talking about that. But uh, that does bring us into our our one of my main topics I want to talk about. But I kind of want to back it up on this Twitter thing, and we had uh, a convert from Windows Home Server to Drobo. And he had issues, and he hit Twitter, and his issues were resolved. Now, I bring this up because when you do go out there to Twitter and you say, I've got an issue with X product from X manufacturer, these guys have saved searches in Twitter, and this is going to come up, and they're going to reply to you and, and try to help you out. Most, most companies do. And uh, Jose Ortiz, we recently opened reported that he had gone to the dark side. He's, he's purchased a Drobo. And um, I guess when he, when he plugged that thing in, he had some issues. And he hit Twitter and says, I have some issues. And uh, Drobo found him. And they've got a new Drobo uh, drop ship to him and got the bad one out of there. And he's up and running. Fresh, fresh brand new. So Twitter does work. Cool. And these companies do pay attention. But uh, this, this is a this is a plus sign for Drobo, not a dollar sign. I know a lot of guys give them uh, a lot of uh, grief about the the cost of their products, and one could say um, the Synology guys, um, you know, have a fairly expensive product themselves, but they do stand behind it. And when when there's a bad one out there, especially what I would call uh, DOA, you know, dead on arrival. Um, they will, you know, stand behind their work, and they they shipped him a brand new. Well, box. and and don't be a, you know, don't be an ass right out of the gate on Twitter. You know, I imagine if you, yeah. if if you kind of approach it, I, I see guys all the time that you know just jump out there and jump down. Well, no one's going to want to help anybody if you're, yeah, you know, just you be nice about it. Ask a question. Um, we had uh, Amber Gott from LastPass on last night uh, with Rich. And her, that's last uh, at last pass help, and she responds to that thing. I mean, if it's during the day, it's right then. So if you've, that's I mean, that's good business to be able to do to do that. And we gave away the Drobo last. We gave away the Drobo S last week, and mm -hmm. Amish who won it told me that he went and registered it today, and they gave him the one year warranty on it, uh, even though nice. I've had it I've had it out and testing it for a while. Um, he, he registered a Drobo, and they gave him one year warranty. So that's I mean. That, that's what you want to look for when you're buying stuff, and it's not always about the 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 cheapest, you know. That's True. that's the kind of stuff where service matters. Yeah, I should a... tweet that my uh, Lamborghini uh, disappeared from my driveway. <laughs> maybe maybe those guys will do a drop shipment too for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll be right over with a brand new one. Would you yeah, like don't do he's, uh, he's in the he's in the chat right now. And he said uh, he got a phone call from Valerie at Drobo, and she was thankful that he had not flamed them out of the out of the out of the gate. So, and um, software 
you know, software companies, they, they hear it on Twitter. You know, this dang thing doesn't work and this effing thing doesn't work and, you know, having trouble with this and having trouble with that. So you, you're right. You come out and you put some sugar on and set of salt and uh, you're going you're gonna to get some help. So I just kind of wanted to praise Drobo for, for doing the right thing. Yeah, and they have some new stuff coming out, Dave. I know we've talked about this a couple times, but they, uh, Mario, I keep asking him, hey, when, when, when? And, and it's, right. it's the dates coming up, but some new MSATA, you know, so a, a Drobo 5 Bay with an MSATA basically is SSD cache. And they say the speed. I'm I'm looking forward to testing it because they said they've they fixed some of the speed problems with them. So it'd be interesting to see. Uh, they got a Drobo Mini coming out too, a little small box that yeah that uh, takes takes small drives. So some good stuff coming up. Yeah, I'm on the list for the Drobo Mini to, uh, to get a hold of one of those and do some reviews. Um, you know, the 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 bigger the bigger blogs are going to get all that first, so it's yeah. no big deal. But I definitely want to test uh, their Thunderbolt connection. Yeah, they start to make it more uh, interesting now that you can get, uh, you know, two and a half inch drives. Uh, you can get them two terabytes, right? I know uh, at least you can get them one terabyte. So, you know, like the thing is, if Drobo would have came out with something like that a couple of years ago, where you know your drives were like, you know, five hundred gig, then you're like, you know, really, am I gonna, you know, five hundred, you know, put four or five hundred gig drives? That's that's not a lot of storage. But now when you can get uh, laptop drives that are like uh, two gigs. Then, then it's like okay, four, you know, four of those. That's oh that, yeah, that's you, a, from that's the lots of room. Now yeah. it makes it starts to are, make it a little bit. Are they up to two terabytes yet? I know they're yeah, definitely seen a, one terabyte. Yeah, I a little fatty, which, and it was one drive. I thought it was like two two drives in there. I think Western Digital they they have uh, one model that it's a a two terabyte drive. Hmm. Interesting. And I think you can put. Uh, yeah, uh, SSD drives in in that uh, that little mini drobo, right? Uh, Jim, did you hear about that one? I think yes, I you read can. Something. Yep, you absolutely yeah. can. I don't want to give wrong information. Yeah, that would be one heck of a mean system. <laughs> Thunderbolt yeah. connection, you know, SSD, huge SSD raid. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that would be like, nice. That would be nice. All right, you guys want to uh, let's talk about. Um, well, first of all, if you're viewing on Google or YouTube. We can be found. We have a chat room. You can come find us, homeservershow.com forward slash live, or just go to homeservershow.com. You'll see the live link. And sorry, Twitter. And uh, you can chat with us. You don't have to sign in. You don't have to log in. No password to remember. You just use uh, click a username and uh, or type in a, a username. And you can join us in chat. So if you're out there, please join us. This show also archives to YouTube almost instantly. So you can always find us um, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Sometime you'll find a new episode on YouTube. You guys want to talk? Why don't you fill me in on the Essentials News this week? What's going on? Let me, uh, well, I just popped up real quick, oh. Dave. The, the, uh, there's your... Two terabyte Intel Power, um, yeah, Intel Power Western Digital Green, two and a half inch drive. Now it's fifteen. I think it's fifteen. Let me look at the millimeters. Fifteen millimeters high. Yeah. So it's That's it. Thick. You gotta watch it if you have some of those other ca older cases. You know that this is a this is a, you know twelve and a half. Like I think the one terabyte is twelve and a half uh, millimeters. So they, so they they start becoming little uh, chubbies. You know. Yeah, and you're not going to get them in all laptops either. So because yeah, you know the thing is with the three and a half inch drives, right? They're they're usually always the same size. Even like the two terabyte, they usually get more. And sometimes you know before they had three discs, or sometimes they would fit four discs in the case. But I haven't seen the the three and a half inch drives like really get any thicker. But the but the laptop drives they do. So you know if you if you had let's say a laptop and you said hey I'm going to go get myself one of these uh, two terabyte drives and slap it into my laptop. You know that might not go. It might not be able to fit into the, uh, the laptop. So that's something to consider. But that's it. Like some of those cases, like the Western Digital, uh, uh, not sorry, not Western Digital. The IC Doc. Remember, I had that four bay guide. The yeah, IC that's what Doc I was thinking. Said, of, like the that IC one Docs. has. Uh, you know, you go you go read the details before you order one, and you say, okay, yeah, this one's got you know, uh, twelve and a half or or fifteen. What did you say that one is? Fifteen millimeters. Fifteen millimeters. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so and then Drobo, uh, you know, that's it. That's something they have to kind of think ahead. And, you know, the, the, the thinner ones will fit also. It's just uh, as long as you know it, it can support the, the bigger drives. 
And at two hundred and thirty dollars right now, that's that's not exorbitant for two terabytes of space. I mean, think about uh, it. That's two terabytes of. I know, but that's expensive. If you ask me. What do we got? Is this a terabyte drive for ninety nine bucks? Yeah. Ay ay ay. Yeah. I didn't say S- I didn't just say this is an SSD drive, did I? I did say no. it's it's a spinner. Yeah. Okay, good. Right. I mean, if you have, I mean, if if you need to put, you know, a, four of those into an IC dock, and slap it into a, a five and a quarter bay, you know, or or a dual five and a quarter bay on your server, then yeah, you you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of drives in a little bit of space, but wow, yeah. it, to me it's still expensive. It's a full fauché, is what it is. You, you go with this if you're looking for the full fauché. We haven't said yeah. that in a while, so I thought I'd break the, that up. The right. full fauché. Yeah, Dave, you're right. podcast, small footprint. also at homeservershow.com. Yeah, small footprint, 15 millimeters. I guess this reminds me to look, because I with SS, or with um, two and a half inch drives, I don't even think about the thickness anymore for, for whatever reason. I, I Even like, you know, because I've been buying only SSDs, and of course they're, what, nine millimeters or whatever they are. Um, so I don't even think anymore. So I, this is a good reminder. Yeah, Jim, before you go by, all two and a half inch drives are not made the same and they all don't fit in every single enclosure that you get. So good reminder. Chat room says that is a fauché and a half. So. <laughs> That's more than the full. Yeah. I like it. We're going to have talk- to get some uh, some cards and hold them up. You know, full fauché, fauché and a half, two fauchés. Half a fauché. Yeah. I like it. Well, let's talk uh, tw- uh, 2012 Essentials release Good candidate. Weeks. And uh, that broke, some of that news broke, I think, earlier today. Was that on, on the forums? Was that today or was that yesterday? I'm sorry, the days are blending. Yes. Yesterday. Okay. And um, it's been such crazy for me. I, I, I can't tell which end is up, but uh, there's, there is a post out there as well as Microsoft uh, posting what's coming out. There's been some changes to 2012 Essentials. So they're still continuing to work on it. I think the increased support for importing your own SSL certificates, I didn't do that. I didn't mess with that, but I know there was a lot of heartache around SSL and the certificates when it first came out. And so um, getting that done before was was kind of messy. And from what I read, uh, they put out, they've made it easier. So if you're, if you're one of these domain users and you're... Uh, you had trouble the last time, you want to go out and give this a try, and, and um, it's supposed to be easier. The, uh, there's also the installation of only critical setup updates during the setup routine. So less, it feeds less of the updates in as it's, up, you know how you say, load everything and all the updates that are available. Uh, it does some minimal updates for you when, uh, when you are installing. So quicker, supposed to be a quicker load time. I was going to test that right before the show, and then I, I ran out of time, so I didn't get that done. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for us, uh, us one-offs, you know, we do it one at a time. Probably not a big deal. Um, uh, the, in the, one of the notes I read, it was really kind of a system builder or someone who's doing multiple installs. Although I can't imagine going into a small business and installing enough that this would make a difference. I don't know, Dave, you do that more. Would You, you ever put more than three or four in at a time? No. Okay. No. See, I, I, yeah, my I, small uh, business is kind of gone. Okay. <laughs> but in the past, though, I mean, before you moved... Yeah. Did you ever do more than two or three or four at once? No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. John, what were you going to say? It kind of makes me, it reminds me of uh, like when I would do install uh, version one, you know, Windows Home Server version one, that's it. You know, it'll go and get it updates and, you know, usually when you install the connector, it goes gets the update and, and that could take hours, you know. You know, so imagine, let's say like months pass by and, you know, now they've come out with the, because that, that, that's like, let's say built into the release candidate. So who knows if in six months from now, or nine months from now, you know, there's going to be a lot of these updates. So you're going to go to some place and you're going to install it, and it's like, oh, you know, I got to wait 45, 45 minutes or an hour or whatever. Like those days, you know, they want to kind of eliminate those days. You know how kind of like with Microsoft, right? I mean, they want to have Windows 8 boot up in like you know eight seconds and stuff like that. And, and with their uh, install of the uh, you know Office 2013, how you know like you can start the download and it's sort of like it's like a streaming download. Uh, you know, like you already get going and, and you can start running Outlook and the thing is still up going to get the updates. So I guess they kind of want to, you know, streamline that so that you can get up uh, up quickly. But, you know, if you're one of these guys that get paid by the hour, you know, you, you hope that it takes, you know, two hours to do the update. You just tell the guy, look, I can't do anything until the updates are done, you know. But it's it's nice that they, uh, 
that they kind of clean that up and then you can choose to uh, to do that later. So uh, anyway, that was one of the things I used to do with, the, with when I installed version one. I actually disconnected the internet connection. So when it went to check for the updates, it, you know, it didn't find any. So then it continued, and then I was able to open this, you know, the console and get into the server. And then at that point, you know, let it go and download the updates while I configure something else. So this is at least this way, you know, you can more or less do the same thing here. Is that while while you know you got it up and fully running. You've been, you know you've put in the server name and all that stuff and you got it going. Then you can you know tweak a couple of things while it's going to get some updates in the background instead of having to to wait for that uh, process to to uh, to complete. Okay, so go ahead, Dave. Do you get the feeling that these uh, there's a couple more here? I'll read in a second. But do you get the feeling these are all geared towards our small business server friends? Um, yeah. Um, last time I checked, this is a small business server. <laughs> yeah, well, but I mean, you know, it they are certainly with the domain and some of the, you know, the next one is the Windows Small Business Server Best Practice Analyzer. I've never run that, so I have no idea what it does. But Yeah, and I, I try to tell guys, you know, not to get too bent out of shape when this product is geared towards business and they address small business. They also address uh, small business partners. Yeah. So just like um, the critical uh, updates during setup, just like you're talking about, you know, this is yeah. this is for the the small business server guy. And the last time I checked, there weren't droves of partners installing Windows Home servers for people <laughs> in their homes, right? It's right. The money, the guys that are making the money right now are on the small business side, not yeah. the not the Windows right. Home server side. Absolutely. Yeah, but those guys are going to squeeze more. I'm sure these these little independent guys that with the with with this version of uh, Windows, those guys are starting to, you know, fall by the wayside. There, is so Microsoft is making it really easy that you can just go install it, click, click next, next, next. Like apparently, even with Exchange, you know, if you have an Exchange server and then you buy this guy, and then you know, you you just in, in the console or the dashboard, you know, you'll see uh, Exchange server. Yes, install the connector on the Exchange, exchange server. Click next, 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 and you're done. And it's like you didn't have yeah. to call your tech guy. And I'm John. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, I know Microsoft's moving in this direction, but I, I am kind of surprised at the the amount of effort they're putting into the on-premise small business server, as opposed to just pushing those pushing most of those guys to the cloud. So, you know, um, by you know, if you need some of this stuff, we'll just do it all uh, Azure in the cloud and and make it good. So, I know they're they're going to support both for a while, and I know there's some crossover as that's going to get done. One of the you know one of the new uh, the other things that came up with is Office 365 changes. So um, it's now easier to import 365 users into into 2012 Essentials. So there it, it just surprises me. I, I maybe that's the wrong word to use. I with this, if there's a ripe market for the cloud, it's the small business guy because it's so easy now. You can spin these things up in the cloud and um, and and do your you know do do it all up there. Well, I guess you know they kind of learned the trick from the from the guys that came out with the um, you know antivirus software. It's like you know let's charge people every year. Microsoft would make you know sell one copy of Windows right. Seven or whatever, and then that's it. Here is antivirus. It's like let's let's you know keep going back to the well every year. It go so here it's like with the Office three sixty five. It's like you know what you don't need the headaches. You know just you'll know, get a subscription and. And and that's how we'll roll, just like what they're trying to do with the uh, with the Office uh, 2013 now. It's like you know, it's forget about you know updating and installing and patches and all of that. Just get Office uh, uh, 2013, which is you know the Office 365 that everybody kind of downloaded there, and you'll stay with the monthly uh, subscription. But uh, getting back to the uh, SBS uh, best practice analyzer, I did notice that when I when I was running the release candidate, that, that's something that they kind of you know, threw in there because when you had the uh, small business server, uh, small business server 2011 essentials, that one I had installed, and as a matter of fact, that's the one that I use now as my testing. My main production one is Windows, still Windows Home Server version one, all all tricked out. That that's my main guy, and then my uh, my testing one is small business server essentials 2011, and I have the stable bit add-in, which just also re recently got an uh, an update. We'll talk about that later. And one of the things in there is you can go to Microsoft and you know you say, well, how how can I make my server more efficient and stuff? And so what you can actually do is go and download this best practice analyzer. 
and uh, you know, and it'll check like for some other stuff that's kind of doing on your server. You know, if you're one of these guys that really want to do things like legit, you know, you you know, because like sometimes the be best practices is they'll say don't install Exchange directly on the server and you know put it on another server. SQL, you know, put it on another server. So they kind of give you some some of like that's it the best practices, which is you know, if everybody had bags and bags of money, you know, you could follow the best practices. Sometimes you could say, look, you know, I'll I'll, I'll save some time here and there, and I'll. You know, I'll I'll do things differently. Sometimes they might say, uh, you know, you should cre increase this file here or this uh, buffer. You know, like actually get more memory to kind of cover this. Again, they're they're, they're nice little wanna haves, you know, but you don't have to kind of go uh, with that. But the thing is, was it was very chatty. I found it was uh, it was very chatty, and then sometimes it would kind of point you to some solutions to check, and then when you would go in there, like it's a bit like your hands were tied. Like there's things you couldn't do. So apparently now uh, they, that's a and those the problem is that those warnings would continue to come up and you say look I want to be able to ignore this stuff just like some posts some Shut some of the other already. guys you know <laughs> yeah you'll stop it already you know and uh, but you couldn't so now I think that's that's some of the uh, the guys in the uh, MVP like the MVP guys there they kind of uh, uh, rumbled made some rumblings about it and and that's it. and I see here that uh, that they're kind of, they're cleaning this up a bit so that's a good thing. Sounds more like a Microsoft server seller mm -hmm. analyzer. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, buy, what you buy really a SQL need. Server. Here, buy this Exchange server. It was, I was having my wiring done this week. The electrician said, oh, yeah, the wire that you have for your stove is not the right gauge. You need thicker wire, and we have to run, you know, and then you start wondering, is this guy selling wire or is, you know... You know, my brother-in-law, he runs a <laughs> copper company. It's, it's a, you wonder if, yeah, John, you're right, you're in Dave, you wonder if there's some, hey, well, all you need is another server license. Yeah, um, best practices, obvious. Uh, yeah. We don't all, always follow best practices. But. I'm a little surprised here with the Office 365 changes because I found with the Small Business Server Essentials uh, 2011, I found that it was really, it was really good. Like you just, uh, you know, you you basically you created your own users, you, you know, your existing users, the console and dashboard, and mm -hmm. then as soon as you signed up with your subscription or you inputted your information, your details about your, uh, you had the two two choices of the different type of Office 365 subscriptions, and uh, you put in the information, then it says you know, and give give this guy an email address, yes, this guy, yes, this guy, no, it was very like a little click next 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 again, so I'm I'm surprised here that. Uh, I, I like I said I didn't run into any issues. I found it very simple and very you know intuitive, and uh, so it'll be interesting to uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll probably uh, install it and in, uh, in a couple of weeks and uh, see how that change what changes were there. But I did uh, hear some again rumblings on the next one there where uh, you were going to mention Jim. Uh, Verify DHCP support. So Windows uh, Server 2012 Essentials uh, supports tuning on DHCP role and setting a static IP address for the server. Actually turning it on so it, yeah. it now can act turning as on, a DHCP sorry, server. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Sorry. Yeah, because that's it. Is a lot of the guys when they were installing, you know, the build that's currently out now, uh, you know, it's an active direct it's gonna be an active directory, a domain server, right? So one of the logical steps you kind of try and do is say, well let that server, you know, take care of the DHCP. Maybe it will install Windows deployment services and that requires that the server has DHCP. So you know a couple of those you know uh, things work well when the server is handling the DHCP. And it was some of the guys were kind of like lost. They're like, do I have to install the role? Do I have to kind of turn it on? Like it wasn't like Obvious that this should be a default that it should be installed and it should be turned on. So I guess they, they you know, they went down this road and they said, yeah, you know, we'll uh, we'll have it set up. So so mind you, it, it already exists in the current build. Just you have to kind of go in there and set it up a bit. Whereas now here it's yeah, okay, we'll we'll just put it on by default. What's the advantage? Uh, you know, in a in a home environment, I you know, your router sets the DHCP in most cases. I think most people probably use the router to set DHCP and then just don't mess with it anywhere else. Um, Dave, what what's the what's the advantage of having the server handle the DHCP in your opinion? Or is you know, I always wondered. Well, like John said, for uh, applications, um, there's a lot of extra control and control of MAC address and everything. But I always and I think I mean I mentioned this uh, way way long ago. I always wondered if someone was going to create an add-in that you could put on your Windows Home server and 
uh, use DHCP and do some kind of net nanny type things where you're doing cash <clears throat> excuse me you're doing caching uh, you're doing website blocking and doing it a little more efficiently than you can in a router so uh, applications I think is is definitely the, the keyword there for running that role yeah, I hope these guys come across with. I hope somebody makes an add-in for like a you know an asterisk server or uh, uh, something for um, you know that's along the lines where uh, or um, what was the other one I was thinking about the WSUS you know Windows Update Server. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I think some some guys were talking about if if that's already. I think you could set that up. Or I, I'm I'm not sure what the discussion is along there but I'm not sure if it's uh, if you could set up uh, Windows Update Server on uh, the uh, on this version I don't know uh, but there's some there's some talk about that so we'll have we'll to see have how to that to follow that up for that now just a reminder we're here on Google Plus Hangout is a live on air hangout you can find us uh, find our chat room at homeservershow.com you can chat with us there there's a live button click that live button and no password needed uh, just to chat with us live. You can also find us uh, on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash home server show. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're talking about Windows Server 2012 Essentials Release Candidate. Now, guys, I need to ask you a question because we've been playing with 2012 Essentials for four weeks. Is, is that how long it's been available? Yeah, I'd have to, to check us? my build. It hasn't been very long, uh, but it's I, maybe a little more than four, but not much more. Well, now we have release candidate. Is there anything different besides these small fixes? Um, I know, Jim, you haven't had time to install it, so uh, it, this is just an updated build. Is, is that all we're talking about here? John, do you know I I don't at this point. I haven't dug into it yet. I was I was really interested to see if they'd made any changes to the start screen, um, if they had any pieces taken away. I was going to run them side by side in virtualization and just kind of see what what changes they made. I, Dave, I can't imagine besides these changes that we've listed, they've made many more to it. So you know, I I think we have the similar bits. It also sounds like they're going to go to RTM pretty quick. So I, I think they've got this. They've focused on it. I think it's going to be quick. Well, it sounds like, I mean, from their, from their verbiage, what they put out, it says we are now turning our sites towards the Windows Server 2012 Essentials release to manufacturing. Um, it, I mean, it, it kind of sounds, that, that term, you know, sounds like, okay, we're, we've got, you know, because uh, Windows Server uh, 2012 is already out and on its way. Right. For the most part, that's done. It maybe it sounds like the server team's buckled down a little bit to kind of get this one wrapped up and um, get that out there just as close to Windows 8 launch as they possibly can. Yeah, they do say general availability by the end of 2012. So if they were going to do that, they would need to get that. To me, that means I can buy it off the shelf. So that means they do need to get an RTM out the door quickly. Yeah. No, I, I, I do think they're going to move. I, I would say we wouldn't see this any later, and I don't have any info. So if I'm guessing and I'm right, <laughs> it is not because I'm an MVP and I have any info. But um, I, I would say we're going to see it before the Windows 8 launch, okay. if maybe not the day before. All right. But that, that's, that's what my gut says. Okay. One thing I have not seen is if you download and install this and put some data on it, um, are you going to have an update or an upgrade path to RTM or not? Uh, I have not seen that question answered. Have you? No, haven't either. Okay. I would like to see them clean something up. I think I I spoke about it a couple of podcasts ago, where uh, uh, when you add a, a Windows 8 PC to like a domain server, like I noticed when I had when I ha I'm running again, like I said before, uh, my test box is a Windows Server 2011, uh, Windows Small Business Server 2011 Essentials. And when I added, when I would add a Windows Seven machine to there, because I'm running running an add-in on that, you have to go and download this add-in where it's called the Windows Seven uh, Premium Pack Add-in. What it does is it's gonna, you know, put all your uh, piece, all your files. And say, okay, you want to add this guy to the network? Now I'll 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 bring all the content to the server there. So Windows Seven did that really nice. And now Windows 8, you know, you expect Windows 8 and and, ser and Server 2012 to be very similar. So that would kind of do the same thing. 
but uh, it didn't. It, it, it's like it's a manual thing. It says, "Oh, you know, I see you've added it, uh, the Windows 8 to the server. Well, now you're going to have to go and manually ma uh, migrate your stuff." And they were talking about that uh, uh, the Windows migration tool and stuff like that. It's like really. It's like, you know, you kind of made it nice and easy for me to add the Windows 7 box. You know, how come I don't see some, some nice, uh, easy stuff along with this, the Windows 8 box? So I don't know, uh, again, if now running this release can... I mean, they're not saying here in this update that, you know, there's a better integration with the Windows 8. They did have the... Uh, remember last week we were talking about the... There was an update for the... Uh, for the Colorado products, right there, uh, mm -hmm. for the Windows 8, uh, if you added a Windows 8 PC. But again, that was like, you still have to go through that migration bit and stuff. So I would like to see the Windows 8 machines, you know, made a lot easier, just like the Windows 7 when they added to this. And mm -hmm. then I think the, the final thing, don't they usually leave, uh, like, the graphics and stuff, like, you know, like eye candy, let's say, for, like, the la right at the end? No, if they, follow, sure they, they follow the Windows pattern they do, right, which is... Right. It gets kind of a different uh, splash screen and a different background for every release. Yeah, so I'm not sure because that's it. When we when they now released the Windows 8 RTM, right? We got a different, some a couple of extra colors and uh, uh, some you know that's it. The, uh, the 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 start menu there or whatever the start screen has that uh, that picture. What 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 city is that? Seattle there, right? Seattle, right. Mm -hmm. Does everybody have that same uh, Seattle screen or? They do. Defaults to that? Yeah. Yeah, you changed it. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't know if they're going to clean it. Like I said, the, one of the things I don't like about the server essentials is not. I don't like the eye the, the eye candy. I like icons and stuff. Where here now it's all text and stuff. And it's a really. But who knows? Maybe it'll grow on me like Windows Eight gr grows on me. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Windows Eight, there's a companion app. Right. So what, what is up with that? There are a number of different apps coming along along that line. So, a remote web access web browser uh, in their Windows Seven app, and a brand new Windows Eight companion app. That um, you know, I, as, as I read through this, I get the feeling they're going to make it. Uh, it'll be this Metro style app that makes it easier to get to the to your folders from from the start screen. Yeah, I just go to. You know, I yeah, but that's it because I just no, flip over and Xbox, go. To you know, you have the Xbox. There's an Xbox companion app. There, there's a few. There's a few software out there that they're you know they're called whatever. You know, like like I said, Xbox companion app. Uh, this guy companion app, and now you know Windows 8 companion app. But you know it it's a bit of a vague stuff. It's like, well, what is that? You know, what does that really do? I know, like you said, the, there's the the phone app which was updated, which was the server stuff that you could see the files, but. I'm kind of guessing that or guessing I, I don't know how the answer to this one, but I'm kind of guessing and I'm kind of hoping that these guys are going to come out with a Windows 8, uh, you know, like a Metro tile. You know, like when you go and you open now when you open the console or the dashboard, you know, you're opening it from the desktop, on, and then you know if you have it, if you actually even if you go into the the tiles, right? If you go to in the, in the Metro interface, you know, you'll see your icons because you installed it. You'll see the icons as tiles. You click on it, but what it'll do is it'll, it'll jump to the desktop and it'll open up. You know everything that you know what we were used to. Right. It's like yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, where is it? I give that a, a plus, plus one. one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> give it a fauché. Uh, a a plus one. Or half a fauché. So uh, that's what I would like to see is you know maybe go along the lines. It's, come on, Microsoft. You know like you know bring more of those. Uh, it, it, it's Microsoft's baby, right? So bring more of those Metro apps, just like they have the uh, the uh, what is it called the. Uh, MX there, uh, the OneNote MX. OneNote MX, yeah. Right? So that that's a full, like, that that app stays right in the Metro interface, you know? So it's like, okay, give me a console app, you know, or a dashboard or the la launch pad, you know, let me, you know, present it, give me the, that other option, give it to me as a Metro app, and let's see how that goes. So I don't know if this is a bit of, if this might be that, or or, or if actually they'll, they'll call it, you know, a Metro uh, dashboard or something. I well, I th I, John, I think the one differentiator in this is not just file access, but in the last line it says, but also supports offline access. So that that could be pretty cool from a from a tablet standpoint of access to your home server f or, or your, yeah, uh, Windows Server 2012 Essentials files. <laughs> there we go. And uh, and, and have, have an, uh, some kind of offline mode could be, uh, could be helpful. No more details than that. What does offline mean? I imagine that goes mm -hmm. along the same lines as some of their other offline stuff. But well, I know there was uh, there was an add-in. Uh, I'm not sure who makes it, Microsoft or what, but 
I, I remember playing around with a like a you know an online add-in. Like basically, you know, it's like you know like a Keep Vault or whatever like that. But it's from Microsoft, and you and you you have you install the add-in WSSX. I think that I'm not sure if that was for the server. This server or was for Small Business Server Essentials. Like the, you know, Microsoft is working on on that type of add-in that you'll have. You know, you can store some of your stuff just like you have Office 365, right? The server is controlling Office 365, but you you know your stuff is actually up on the cloud. It's just giving your local people access through the server to that cloud stuff. So uh, you, know, you know, there's going to be like an an, uh, an add-in for for uh, storage, you know, online storage. So you might be able to, you know, pick and choose what files you want to be stored there, and then you know somehow through your uh, your app that's uh, for your whatever Windows RT or whatever that you now you'll have access to some of that files, you know, if your server is off or. Somehow get get to that. I think pictures and music would be important at that yeah. point. Anyway, we've also seen that how some of that sky, uh, what the sky drive interaction, right, Dave? Where you you kind of you know had access to your server. Okay, your server is online, but you had mm -hmm. access through the sky drive app. You know, from from uh, from excuse me, from remote. So maybe there, maybe uh, that's another thing that I'd like to see them playing around with. Uh, you know, build natively. I mean, you sure. do have the remote web access that's uh, that's built into the server. Like, like I said, they, they've added the media stuff into the in the in the server edition, which they don't have the media stuff in the small business server essentials. But they, they you know, that's one of the things from Windows Home Server 2011 that they kind of ported over to uh, to uh, server essentials. So nice. Yep. I guess um, I guess I need to throw this out there. I guess we need to get busy testing this product, don't we? And if you're thinking, hey, I'm listening to this now, I need to get busy testing this product, why don't you drop me a line if you would like to, uh, you know, talk with us on the podcast about uh, 2012 Essentials. Uh, you know, in the future, you know, we've got, a, we've got a long way to go with this product, so if you're interested and, and you're testing it a lot at home, let me know and uh, maybe you can help us out. And the download is four gigs for the ISO. The um, takes a few minutes for it to come down. Yep. The restore um, the restore disk is about five hundred and sixty meg I see. And the manual is seven hundred and forty eight kilobytes. So. We need to move on, even though this is just so much fun talking about twenty twelve <laughs> essentials. I don't know. Does it? Does it? I don't know. It just feels dry to me. Well, you know, the, I think I was I was thinking this as we were talking through it, and, and I mm -hmm. folks still can, can still continue to struggle with the price, and it doesn't sure. feel like it's obtainable for most people at this point. They, I, I think they're still feeling like, and I heard I saw somebody post this the other day at five hundred bucks, and I thought, okay, we're, let's you know, it went from four to four twenty five to five hundred. They're and, rounding it. Yeah, well, and it there maybe they're over embellishing, but it, it I think there's a little bit of backlash on that, and and certainly everybody's kind of kind of bent that they threw that price out there. That's actually pretty inexpensive on the small business server side, and and that's going to be a great deal for us small businesses. I again, I have I'm I'm hoping that Microsoft will throw some kind of deal or some kind of bone to the Windows Home Server community at some point and, and allow folks to get in on some kind of deal. So, I, again, I don't have any inside information. I'm just kind of hoping that yeah. they'll they'll do something. It, may, it might be one time. And I'll tell you what, uh, Windows Home Server community, if they do something and it's got a short lifespan and you don't take advantage of it, I'll have, no, it. <laughs> I'll have no mercy on you. It. <laughs> You know where I think that the I think where the fun is going to be or the help is going to be is is uh, Dell or one of these guys will come out with you know the server a thousand bucks. Like they'll probably give you a two terabyte drive, uh, Windows Server Essentials installed, and a couple little maybe add-ins this and that, and, and you'll you'll be able to pick up a server between eight hundred and a thousand bucks. Because that's it. If they don't really want to kind of you know squeeze, uh, give you a good deal, you know, it's like what happens? You know, if they if they do all of a sudden you know drop the price to uh, two fifty or something like that, it's like you know people are going to be pissed off that they paid four hundred. You know, so it's yeah. like you know just wrap it into a deal, get or get yourself a you know like imagine if they bundle it with a um, uh, the micro server, you know, and yeah. they say you know five hundred or six hundred dollars for the micro server, and it comes with uh, you know 
Windows Storage Essentials. I can't see HP doing it, John. I can, least, I can see LaCie doing it, though, here in the United States. I can see them jumping on this and, and putting some nice... You know, they'll be packaged. They, they won't be cheap. These aren't going to be $300 servers that you're going to get into. Yeah. But they'll, they'll look nice. They'll be packaged well. They'll be built well. They'll come with, with 2012 Essentials. And um, you'll be able to get nice equipment and some nice drives. And you'll be in, and you won't know... You don't even think that you paid 400. You won't have paid 400 because the OEMs are not paying that price, people, for 2012. Right? That's not what they pay. So the bigger ones, the more they buy, the cheaper the price. And um, so if if those kind of things do come out, we need from a community standpoint, if it's reasonable, we need to support that because it's they're the ones who you know they're they're taking the risk to do this. Yeah, or 2011s like. Twelve dollars now. Um, yeah, well, Dave, I was going to say uh, my 2011 box since 2012 has come out. I, I don't know if it's like afraid, but it's just been a rock star. I yeah. mean, it has not given me any problems. It. The other day, uh, Sarah and I were moving. I'm moving all our music up to Amazon, and and I'm making mm-hmm. the cut over for the music. Okay, so it'll okay. be on Amazon. I'll re-download it when I need it. I'm not going to try and keep it locally from here on out for the most oh, part. Oh, really? So you're deleting local copy? Uh, deleting the local copy. Nice. It's all going to the cloud for now. I may at some point download everything and get the upgraded, you know, because Amazon upgrades your music for you if you purchase okay. it from them and stuff like that. As I need it or I feel like it, I, I don't feel like I need to necessarily keep my music local. I don't have bandwidth issues. I can get to everything from everywhere that may not be your experience. but So I'm in the middle of moving files over so we can upload them to Amazon, and I delete a whole album, I mean a whole folder album, and it's like one of my wife's favorite ones. And I don't just delete it. I like shift delete and enter, and it's, shoop, I mean it's gone. Isn't and that kind of creepy? Doesn't that freak you out? Yeah, well, it's, she's like, where'd it go? And I'm like, well, hold on. So, you know, the, the home, home server's Dude, right here. Yeah, the, the home server's right here. And uh, so I, I, you know, I opened the last backup and drilled down into the folder. It took me about five minutes. Said restore this folder. Bam! It was back right there. I just grabbed it, moved it over, and we uploaded. Oh, so, fearless Jim. You know, yeah, 2011. It's just been a rock star. Yeah, right now it has been. And I, I haven't done the remote access stuff, and I haven't um, tried to come in and and do anything crazy on it. I did install Subsonic on it as as a test, and uh, and it worked great, but. Yeah, so I think maybe there's a little fear, or I don't know if it's become stable with with uh, rollout three. If that's just gotten to the point where it's a commodity. So if you're not wanting to go to twenty, this is the thing that kills me, guys. You don't have to upgrade. Okay, twenty eleven <laughs> still works. It does. God, it does, and it, wor- so it works really well. Yeah, I just get yeah. the whining that goes on at times. It's like, come uh-huh. on, you can, you don't have to upgrade today. So there we you go. gotta have something to whine about. We, we like new things. I know. Well, but that, that's good advice, Jim, because, I mean, you have to kind of think about, uh, you know, servers are kind of like, you know, workhorses. They do their thing, and they don't have to be the most powerful beast on the, on the, in the planet. They, they just got to be like, you know, like, you know, solid, reliable, and, and, you know, duration. You know, like work for a long time, and, and there you go. And like I said a couple of podcasts ago, uh, Leo Laporte mentioned on uh, one of his uh, tech programs, there, the, the, the tech guy. Mm-hmm. Somebody called in, and the guy said, "Yeah, you know, use Windows Home Server. Like, you don't have to jump to the server." Twenty. Same advice you're you're giving there. It's like, yeah, you know, it's a server. You don't need all the bells and whistles. I know my brother was uh, quizzing me last week about uh, uh, libraries because that's one of the thing with Windows Eight is uh, is the library stuff. You have to have your uh, your shares. If you want to see it in the Metro app, your collection has to be in the uh, in the libraries. And uh, there's a there's an issue with adding, um, you know, ad- adding libraries that are on on the server. And uh, again, I think Paul Thorat ha- recently had an an um, an article. I, I think uh, I'll have to take it a second look there, unless the guys in the live stream can help me out with that one there. But uh, I think he said that with the new RTM release and with the with the um, uh, Windows Server 2012, not the not the not the one that we're talking about today, but the, the the previous release there that everybody already has. I think he said that there was there they they kind of fixed that connection where your the shares you know on the server. He's adding it to libraries in Windows 8, and then in the Metro app in Windows 8, it, it sees the stuff properly. Windows 7, Small Business Server Essentials 2011, blah blah blah. I'm still having those issues and stuff, but it seems that that was that seems to be something that was corrected now with the RTM of Windows 8. 
and uh, Windows Server Essentials. So that's good. Dave, let me let me let me say one more thing about that as I was moving my music up to the cloud. Um, I was using Windows 7 fi uh, file transfer to move, so I, I brought up two windows, snapped one to the right, one to the left. Windows Home Server on the right, uh, the local file that I was I was pulling from for Amazon to move them up because we were going through them one by one. Some stuff was junk and we were just deleting it, so we right. wanted to go through it manually. And um, so uh, about every 15 or 20 minutes, and I was moving a lot of files. I was deleting and moving and deleting and moving. About every 15 minutes it would crash. Windows Explorer would just stop working. Her go down, it was done. For whatever reason, in my environment, uh, maybe it's on the SSD drive, maybe I was you doing too many keyboard shortcuts. I don't know. It wouldn't work. So I, I thought, well, that was weird. So I did it again, and sure enough, 15, 20 minutes of that kind of intense little files, moving them across, a lot of action, crashed it. So I thought that was kind of weird. And, and at about that point, Mike Howard was baiting me in Facebook about Windows 8, like he likes to do from time to time. So I went, you know, I wonder how this works in Windows 8. So I fired up my Windows 8 VM, did the exact same thing. Went to the desktop, brought up Windows Explorer, snapped it to both sides. You know what? I moved. I did about 45 minutes or an hour worth of, of moving. Not only that, but you get the pause feature in Windows 8 now when you're moving files across environments. If, if it's big and you need to stop it for whatever reason, you, there's just the pause button that's right there now. Um, that thing on Windows 8 was just rock solid for me. And, and it was one of those perfect examples where we com I could compare Windows 7, and they were on the exact same processor, right? One was, one was bare metal, the other one was in a VM, so maybe not exactly the same, but um, on the same box, from the same server to same destination, or, or very similar destination, in Windows 8 just kind of rocked it at, at, at that point. So that was one of those moments I went, well, what's a reason to move to Windows 8? I know there's been a lot of questions. I'm not going. I'm not going to do this. You know, it's it won't work for me. Um, there's there in my book. There's reason number one that I'm that you know that I'm going to look heavy at moving to Windows 8 uh, sooner rather than later. Jim, you make me think of a point there. I noticed, uh, you know, when you get older, your memory starts to go. You know, that's just a thing of life, right? You call me old, John? No, I'm not in your case. I'm thinking in my case. And uh, so this this one point kind of helped me out. What was interesting is uh, I was copying a bunch of files. So, you know, I said, okay, copy this from, from this folder to this folder on, on my Windows 8 machine. And then, you know, you kind of minimize that and you go on to do some other things, you know, multitasking. Then I, I installed some software that says I have to reboot the PC. So, okay, fine, go ahead, reboot. <laughs> Would you, and my files are still being copied. The PC rebooted. It came up. I logged in. The files continued to, to, to update, to copy over. In Windows, 8, in Windows 7, you would just lose it. It's like, whoa, wait, I closed the window. I did something or whatever. You just would lose wherever you are. But like you said, you can either pause them for whatever reason, or you could just say, or, or you can actually reboot. And I might even go as so far as to say, I think, but this was a couple months ago, I think I was doing a backup of the PC to the server, and then I rebooted, and then the backup continued. So like the Windows, uh, when the the server just like waited for the PC to 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 do its thing, and then when it can, when the PC booted back up, the the the, the backup continued to do to to uh, to finish. That's pretty nice. I can't tell you how many times I've done a file copy and then yeah, so update flash or reboot. And you're like, oh right, crap. or it just it, you you start it and you walk away and you come back and it you don't you know I've never trusted Windows. You know Windows file transfer because you're like, and to, at least I unless I saw that thing actually finish, mm -hmm. you know, I'd be kind of like, oh, did it actually transfer, or do I need yeah. to go back and check it? Should I start files, it? or that's or you rely on, you start relying on other third-party apps and stuff yeah. like that. Whereas now it's yeah. more, yeah. And then you get the graph too, right? You do get the graph. You get the speed graph, and uh, and that's pretty cool. It, it it gives you some at least some indication of how fast yeah. it's going. And like you said, as far as pausing, like that's it. You you can say, okay, copy these files to those files, these files to there, these files, and then then you you know you say, oh wait a minute, this is more important than that one. So like you say, you can pause that one, and this other one just continues. Because remember, one of the things is if you if you took a whole bunch of files in Windows Seven, you copied and you you said uh, copy and then paste, and it would say, okay, it's going to take you eight minutes. Then you grab another selection and you, you copy and you paste. Your eight minutes will now went to like 40 minutes. It's like, 
oh man, you know, now and now you're kind of stuck. Do I cancel it? Which one do I cancel? <laughs> but uh, I, I think the thing is with Windows 8, it does a much better job at file copying. And at least now you also have the option where it, uh, you can say, okay, let, let me just pause this one because this one is a, is a higher priority. So, so yeah. true. So yeah. very true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and guys in chat are mentioning various, you know, Sync Toy and RoboCopy and sure, and and those are great. TerraCopy, that stuff's great. I just as I'm the more I use Windows 8, um, I had thrown some advice out uh, and say, hey, don't don't try Windows 8 for a day and then say you don't you like it or you don't like it. You got to give it some time because you can't sit at a computer and do everything you do all the time in in an hour or two or four or even a day. This was this situation where I was moving files. I mean, I never would have done that in a normal test environment. Mm -hmm. It was during the course of my, of you know, hey, I wonder how that, boy, I'm having some problems with Windows 7. I'm going to try this now. And now I'm like, wow, that, that file transfer really does work better uh, than they said it would. So. Hey, David, right. can talk about the stable bit? Yeah, let's move on to some news. Um, yeah, stable bit's in the news. What's going on? Yeah, like I said, uh, since I'm running Small Business Server Essentials 2011, I'm running the uh, Stablebit add in there. I purchased I purchased that when it was uh, like I, well, I was one of the beta guys, and I got it for like half price. I think it was ten or uh, ten or fifteen dollars, some, something really cheap. And uh, so that's it. Now he's got a uh, a version out there, 1.02.6716. So he's doing a uh, he's giving you a little bit. Uh, you can manipulate, you know, which data, like when you want things, uh, uh, you know, your file, uh, you want to duplicate your shares. It's like, well, you know, do you want to give the drive priority? Do you want to have more on the, on the larger drive? Like, let's say you have, you know, one terabyte, two terabytes, and three terabyte drives. You might, you might say, well, I want to try to get more of the stuff onto the three terabyte drives. Or I want to allocate the space a little bit differently. Or I want duplicating, like, done, like, later and stuff like that. So you can actually uh, change some of the stuff. So it's going from one uh, version 1.01 to 1.02, and that's a milestone there. So you have to kind of like uh, you can look up the uh, uh, in uh, their uh, change log about a bunch of the couple of little you know nice things that he's doing. So it, it is a bit like like a generation or a, a next gap there on the next level. So uh, so that's nice, and, I, and I'm playing it. Like I said, that's my test box. Mm -hmm. So all my data that's on that server, I actually have it on my version one. So, uh, but you can say with the the version of stable bit that is like you know the, the their whatever it is their release candidate that they have you can you play with that one and say okay I'm just you know my 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 data is important to me I'm gonna stay with that or you can kind of you know fork off to the uh, the the version that is now you know continuing development because it's not like I'm gonna they're gonna stop there they're continuing development there's a, there's a good article also I'll give you a link uh, he's talking about different versions like in the future what he plans. Uh, you know, because uh, some people were even asking, you know, can they install this add-in or will they be able to install this on server 20, 2012 essentials? Because some people don't like storage spaces. Some, some people don't like the idea where storage spaces, remember we, we saw one guy had a, an issue where, you know, something was corrupted or he did something and Microsoft says, just take the drives and put it on the shelf and wait for the fix later. <laughs> you know, wait for it. You know, it's like Terminator. You know, we'll come back in, in the future to, in, in, in the future, we'll come back freeze. in the past to fix your problem, you know? Yeah, fr freeze their head so that when they, <laughs> in in a hundred years from now, we can bring them back from the dead, right? Yeah. So so there's a good article about, uh, you know, you know, his his future plans and and the next like version 1.03 and I think and then it's going to go to version 2.0, so I'll give a couple of links in that. So I'm I'm one of the guys that's playing around with that add-in, and I like it. Like I said, it's it's reliable. It's uh, NTFS stuff. So even if your if your server goes down and you know drops dead, you can still take those drives out, put in another machine, and read them. So that's what I like about it. Something to be said for that, and I, I think there's a lot of testing that still needs to be done on storage spaces. So, I, I, you know, that's that's one of those Windows 8 features that's going to roll out on October 26th, and I wonder how many, first, I wonder how many consumers will never even know it's there to begin with. True, yeah. Uh, so that may not even cause a problem because your average consumer is probably not adding additional hard drives. media in. center. They click it once, like, what's this? You're oh. like, eh, uh, uh, Where's okay. Facebook? I'm good. 
<laughs> yeah, they're going to be pretty excited. I think when Windows 8 rolls, they're going to be pretty excited to get those that touch interface and mess around with a keyboard that folds back and those kinds of deals. And, um, oh, look, I can touch it. So, John, go. The other point uh, we're bringing up, uh, talking about uh, storage spaces, I heard some places, I don't have the details there, but some guys were saying uh, with the storage spaces, there's like, you have sort of like the interface that you, you kind of see right off the bat, and then you have some kind of like, uh, you go into a uh, control panel, like there's different ways of kind of getting to storage spaces, and they're seeing some options, like you, you don't see them until you kind of like dig into a different, like sort of like a back door. So I don't know exactly what's going on there, and I hope that that kind of gets cleared up and stuff because that's it. Sometimes, like you say, it might be like a Windows Media Center thing where you know somebody will click, see a couple of words, I don't know what to do, and then that's it. That'll, they'll never touch that again, you know. But uh, I, I hope that that kind of, well, you know, two terabyte drives, right? So it's like people might say they might say, well, "I'm done," you know. The average person, maybe the average person, one, you know, one two terabyte drive is all they'll need in their lifetime. So yeah, they, John, they spaces? might. I mean, I we, again, we're a community that loves to hoard our data, and and uh, I'm I'm the least probably hoarder of all of us in a lot of ways, and I can get away with one two terabyte drive for the most part. I mean, if if that was Dave shaking his head, but I could. I mean, and and um, so, and I think in that case, I am the average guy. I mean, I think, you know, I got about I got about thirty gig of music, and I've got about. 30 gig of documents, and I might have 100 gig of pictures, and and you know I just don't. Yeah, <laughs> Dave, you're shaking like you. It's this is unbelievable. How could anybody be this way? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I I probably could if I if I worked at it. Well, I think this bodes well, although I, I do think this bodes well for the average guy when it comes to storage and backup. I think in some ways we've made it a little too complicated for them. I mean, I think if we came out with some boxes that had two drives in it and it was two two-terabyte drives and one mirrored the other and when it, and like a Drobo or Synology, when the drive went bad, it just flashed and said replace this drive with something else and you could just pull it out and put another drive in and it would automatically mirror Honestly, for probably 65 or 70% of the people in the world, that would be way better backup than, than and it would be more backup than they're doing now because they're not doing any now. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's, that is, uh, I, I just, I just think we could I do a better, like, go ahead, John. I, I still like the idea, like w having a server where it's like centralized storage. It's like, you know, I, I see more, like you said, with the tablets, this and that, you know, the guys might want to have access to their all their media and they don't have a super fantastic, you know, upload or download speed. And it's like, okay, I got a tablet. It's, got a, it's only got a 16 gig uh, flash drive. You know, how do I watch my, my, my uh, Blu-rays? Well, you know, that's it, baby. Your Blu-rays are on your server, you know, go get it there. So, you know, and then people, you know, uh, now that you can buy a small little, uh, you know, footprint PC, it's like okay, yeah, you could get a get yourself the two terabyte laptop drive, but it's almost like why don't you just make a like a solid state or really kind of like, um, you know, no moving parts, little PC, and it's connected on your gigabit uh, network, and all your content is on your server. So you know, and as you move through the house, because that's the whole thing, is right. If you if you do have a, a two terabyte uh, laptop drive on your PC, but then you you go to the living room and you say, well, I want to watch something that's on my lap, my, my little box. Well, that thing's got to be you know plugged in, turned on, or whatever. So it's like, no, no, no. You know, play to Microsoft's whatever, play to function or something. Keep your keep your content. That's the way I roll. My content's on the server. And I have, uh, I'm going, you know, I was, I had a two terabyte drive in my PC, went down to one terabyte down. Now I have a 60 gig SSD drive in my, in my main PC. It runs quieter, runs smooth, you know, uh, less power, this and that. And everything's on the server and I just grab my stuff wherever I am. So, you know, I see the use for a server and uh, because of the, because of the fact that, you know, I'm kind of minimizing everything on, on the desktops. Ooh, well, Microsoft, then, uh, Google's asking me, are you still there? Yeah, so I guess we I hit the hour up. mark. I you know, I know we're wrapping up, Dave. The, the last thing I'll say on that is if you've watched your kids compute lately, they have no concept of files for the most part. They don't care. that They don't, they don't care where stuff is. Um, we're raising a generation of kids who just think it's there. Right. And, and, uh, and so that idea and they're okay they don't care if it's local or on the cloud or if they're right i mean they don't they don't they just don't care they just get it 
most of them are playing games that are that are server based and they're not keeping a lot of stuff. I mean, I ask them all the time, "Do you want me to keep track of your homework files?" Well, they're like, "Homework? Why would I want to keep that?" I mean, that's done. I turned it in. You know, <laughs> why would I? Why would I want to file three years from now of homework I did when I was a freshman? You know, right. and um, and so it's it's one of those things. And then of course. You know, music subscriptions and some of those things. We've we've had this talk before. So. Yeah. Yeah. Then you know, you wait till your kid's eighteen, and then your kid comes to you and say, "Dad, do you have any of my baby pictures? Why would I keep that?" Whoa, yeah, whoa, no, whoa. no, right on, John. That's yeah. <laughs> but you know what? You throw I, that one at him, John. Why I take I keep pictures. that. That's done. It's over. I take pictures on my phone. They automatically go to my Dropbox, and they automatically go to Google to Google Plus. I don't have any. I mean, I've kind of stopped. I, every picture I've taken in the last two years is now in the cloud. Now again, aver- I'm the average user. This isn't going to work for the photographer, but it's just—I mean, it's just—I don't even think about. It. The other day, I was looking. I'm like, "Holy crap! I haven't taken a picture in a while." Oh, that's right. They're all in the cloud, and they're full versions in the cloud. And I didn't have to think about syncing this when I got home. It just automatically moved a copy to Dropbox and a copy to Google Plus, two places. Just saying. As long as you don't get no email from Just Google saying. Plus that says, you know, uh, your subscription has ended and we're deleting all your content. No. I, I did I get that from Amazon. You were, you were talking about your Amazon cloud player. I got that email maybe today that my cloud drive has uh, expired. I think because they gave me 20 gig free or something. Yeah. So I have to go out and look. To, I, I've never used their Amazon cloud drive. I use S3. I use Amazon Music Player, but uh, and I think the music is just. I think it's always out there. I'm not sure. I I I, I got to go read it. I think that just uh, limit your access when it does uh, expire. So um, let's see. We are at whew, an hour and fifteen minutes, and I wanted to talk about where you keep your server. Do we need to bump this to next week? No, I think we can cover this real quick. Okay, work real quick. Where's your server? Right there. Right there. Okay, John, where's your server? My sir, I have actually a piece of furniture down here, and I got uh, three servers there. <laughs> and the room is hot, and you know, I took out the air conditioner today because it, uh, it got warmer there outside. Yeah. And, uh, or actually cooler. Sorry, the nights are cooler. So I took out the air conditioner, and now I'm kind of regretting it. But it's one of those window, you know, window. Well, here's my deal. I when I had um, version one in a media smart server, I used to keep it like right on my desk because it was yeah, because it's a nice box. Yeah, it's a nice little toaster looking box. It had the little lights. It was this is a pretty box. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> blue, blue little HP. Hold on. There. Yeah, no, that's good looking. Okay. Wow. Um. But when I started loading, when I, when I did my build my own and I, I put tons of hard drives in it and tons of fans and power supply, the thing was louder in a jet engine. So I had to put it in like my server room where I kept my router and my switches and everything. And uh, it's not the greatest room. There's a water heater in there, and uh, but it's cool. <laughs> it's yeah. in the basement. Um. Now, I've, I've recently moved, and I have a basement, and I have my own office area. My own office area has a closet where I'm storing all of my parts and whatnot, and I was thinking about putting my server in there, except the airflow is none whatsoever. I'm, sit, I'm hot right now, and mm-hmm. I can just imagine having my media center server, um, a Win8 box, and a Windows home server churning away in there. I was just curious if anybody had any, I don't know, any examples of how they're doing that in uh, in tight tight offices. Where I got a tip for one. you, Dave. Shoot. A uh, couple of years ago, you know, check go over to uh, Andrew Edney's site there, Connected Digital World, and uh, Tim DeLeo, He uh, he's got his uh, Media Smart server. He's got a 470 in a glass cabinet, you know, with lighting in it. So like you know, two glass doors. You know, it's it's a nice setup. And like you know, it's it's not basically a server's on display there. And it, like you said, you know, it's it's warm in there. So he actually uh, he did a nice tutorial there where he uh, bought uh, like a kit and he he cut into the um, the ceiling because it's like two doors set. You know, it's like the wall is kind of 
you know, uh, it's in, basically you're putting doors in a, what do you call it, in a cove in the wall. So he has access, and then there, there's shelves against the wall. So it's not like a full cabinet. So anyway, he has access to, through the top. He cut through the gyp rock there, or what do you, you call it? You guys call yeah. that gyp rock? We Drywall. call it gyp rock. Drywall. Dry Gypsum. rock? Drywall. Okay. Yeah. So then he put like a, a tube, you know, from the back of the of the server where the fan is up to there, and up there he put a couple of fans, you know, you know to, to exhaust it because your, your server's not going to be powerful enough to, to push that air out there. So he's uh, blowing the air out into that, that area there. And uh, I think the the he has two small fans, and like I said, you can buy it as a kit. And those two fans, you can add like a extension wire and plug it into the USB port. So uh, you know they'll run on five volts or twelve volts. I'm not sure. Yeah, five volts. Yeah, USB is five volts. So when your server boots up, those fans all, all run. And when your server shuts down or sleeps, you know they'll shut down. So that's how he's exa uh, exiting exhausting the, the the heat there. Because yeah, like you said, you know my my nephew he has a small cupboard in the in the in the hallway and he puts his uh, server there and it's like whew, you open the door it's like poor thing you know especially yeah. when you're, you're on the dashboard and you have some kind of uh, add in you, you and then you, it's telling you your temperature is warm especially that's what's nice about the media smart servers is they do have a uh, a sensor in there so you know it'll come up on your uh, on your console because i mean what good is it if your server's in the room and the light is red on the server you know it's not it's not any good but at least in, in the dashboard if you have the ad you know uh, media smart server those that guy will tell you, hey, you know, your your server's running uh, too hot, so do something about it. So there, there, there's something there. My my again, you don't have to have a media smart server to do that, but you know, putting a, a tube up to the ceiling that might be uh, interesting. And remember, mm -hmm. uh, AJ, a uh, long time ago, AJ actually had a cabinet, one of those cabinets from IKEA, and what he did is he had two holes because the cabinet doesn't sit right on the floor; it's about six inches off the floor. And uh, so what happens is in the front of the cabinet, on the bottom, he has like two holes drilled because it's two glass doors. So, so this is where the air is going to be coming in. So it's just two holes. You can put this little screen there or whatever. So the air comes in. And then at the back panel, so now you have to have this, you know, this piece of furniture you know, away from the wall. It can't be up against the wall. So up on, in the back on the top, uh, yeah, in the back on the top, like this way, I guess. Can you see my hands? Yeah, this way, the, the, in the two corners, he has a... Uh, drilled out and he has two fans and so he blows it out there because you want to have a bit of a path right you you know you want to because heat rises right so you want to have the you know the fans at the top and not at the bottom yeah i would love to uh get you guys out in the forums and uh we'll talk about where you keep your server i know it was a short segment but i do have a, a kind of a closet area where i'm storing stuff and i'm thinking about putting some things in there the other reason is i don't like I don't like the noise of the PC um, just right around you. You know, I used to have a condenser-based microphone that would pick up a lot of ambient noise, and I like that quiet work area. I don't like that constant whir and that hum of all the fans and hard drives and whatnot. So I do like to have uh, those things as removed Dave, as possible. Would you put that behind a door? I mean, you're not going to put that in a closet shut the door that house was probably built pretty tight right no i would not i probably would not uh shut the door no so would you vent it but i would i, I definitely had to figure out some way to vent it yeah because I, um, I would think a vent on the bottom and then i i would the only thing i don't like about here in the midwest with the, as cold as it gets i don't want that i don't want a permanent vent up in that going out to the attic which is just asking for heat to just get yanked right out of your you know, house even yeah. with the door shut so you could put a vent at the very top of the door that has a shutter on the back side and in the in the winter you open that up and vent your your heat exhaust back into the room and in the summer you shut that and then open the top vent and and send that heat uh, back out to the attic and let it go out through the the attic vents so that might be a nice little and that's those aren't i mean that's it's mechanical and you've got some vents sticking out your door i don't know if you want to you know do it that way but we'll see uh, how about I'll, I'll save you that uh idea when you roll through here um to, yeah um, you know what the the one the early october event got canceled oh so i won't be so, there i'll have to see you on the meetup okay on the meetup so uh yeah on the meetup we'll we'll go over my uh server dilemmas right now it's in the basement which um, I'm not too crazy about because there are a lot of water fixtures uh, that are around it. So I'm going to have to at least separate the Windows home server from my backup uh, server uh, that the home server copies to every night. 
So I, I, I need to get both of those out of this uh, water room, which I call it. it. It's your basic mechanical room. So, All right, we are running long. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, thank you, audio podcasters, for downloading and listening. If you have a chance and you subscribe on iTunes, please visit us on iTunes. Give us a couple of stars if you like it. Uh, write a review if you want to. You don't have to write a review. You can just go out there and click the stars. And why don't you consider joining us? We typically broadcast at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, on every Wednesday evening, usually every Wednesday evening. And uh, we are getting close to that uh, magical time of CES. I have registered. I have not decided if I'm going to go. Uh, this year I've looked at the hotel pricing and it is a little bit more expensive. Even uh, the Shat Circus. Is <laughs> so I'm still considering oh, that. I'm also um, considering uh, cutting cutting down my time at CES. Last year, I I think I went or the, early this year. I went for almost a week, or I think I did go a week. And uh, I don't want to do that again. That's a long time to be there, man. It was. It was. Um, we did a lot of coverage. Yeah, <laughs> as you well know, at the end, uh, I was pretty much worn out. What do you see there, Dave? Oh, it's nothing. Yeah. No, you you won't like this. No, I'm moving on. <laughs> I'm totally disengaged. We had a good time, though. It was good. Very good time. All right, that's been episode number one ninety four. For Jim and John, I'm David McCabe. We thank you for tuning in. We'll see you here next week. Bye-bye. Adios. So we have a new Lenovo in the house. Well, it's not really in the house. We shipped it down to Kansas City for the college kid. We bought an idea pad. He Actually, he bought it. An idea pad Y580. It's a laptop. Um, it came with the uh, Core i7-3610 wow. QM, something like that. A pretty... Pretty fast mobile processor, 8 gig of RAM, terabyte hard drive, which I encourage him to rip out at some point and uh, replace yeah. it with an SSD. And then he can take that one terabyte, put it in a closure, and use it as backup. Um, I had him get the slower spinning drive because it's a little easier on power than, um, than the 7200s. And um, uh, 900 bucks for the whole thing. 15.6 inch screen. Oh, it's got the 2 gig. Uh, GTX 660, I think, in there. So, um, yeah, he's got a lot. He's got a pretty rocking. So he has this desktop. He's got this Core i7 desktop, and now he's got this Core i7 laptop that he'll take to school and do his art stuff on. And, and I'm, a little, I'm a little jealous. <sighs> he's got the latest hardware. Yeah? He's got it, man. The kid has got it. Just killing me. <laughs> he, call, he called me and said, Hey, Dad, I need a laptop. It can be anything except a Mac. <laughs> it's nice. like, that's, that's my boy. <laughs> um, that's good. All right. Yeah, I'm burning up right now. Ouch. All right. It's going to be tough to, get, to keep this. I got, uh, an icy, cool. I got an icy pop. Remember these guys? Yeah, yeah. Pure sugar. Sugar, water. Sugar, sugar. Remember, man, you guys still make Kool Aid? You know? Four cups of sugar mm -hmm. and a. No. Sugar's evil, man. It is for my kids. <laughs> oh, that's so, awesome. you think there's. Uh, are there, is uh, Apple coming out of we're off the off air there? Is that. Is. Um, Mac there or Apple supposed to come out with a seven inch uh, iPad or uh, iPod uh, Touch? That's what they say. I'm not sure. Next I'm month. Looking for a uh, Lumia 900. September 7th. <clears throat> 12th. Oh, sorry. 12th. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Uh, I Paul act like I don't know anything. That, uh, Nokia, there's supposed to be, have some kind of event coming up. And, that, yeah. and he was kind of. Fifth or something? Well, guessing there. He said, you know what would be cool is if Nokia came out with a, uh, you know, like a, a tablet, a seven inch tablet uh, with the same form factor as the Nokia 900. That would be that nice. Would rock. Be cool. that, that would be, be nice. nice. Windows RT. Yeah, I even looked during the show. I checked Craigslist while we were, were going to see if there were any updated Lumias. I talked to Lux. 
oh, I don't know, two weeks ago. No, last week, last weekend. And he's just got a new 900. He ordered it well, off. Well, used, yeah. He got yeah. a Craigslist. Mm-hmm. And he's pretty happy with it. Didn't they do? Did they release the seven? What is it called? The seven point five or seven point eight update for the phone that gives you yeah. the new Metro? Uh, yeah, no. Um, I don't know if it has the wide. Does it have the screen edge screen to screen? Yeah, it's supposed to have the edge to edge. Oh, huh. I don't know. Well, I know like the new update's supposed to have it, but I thought I saw somewhere where because my son has one of those phones and you know it's like you have to install the uh, you know the Zoom software to update the phone. Can you believe it? Yeah. Hey, what are you going to do? Better than a sharp stick in your eye. <laughs> Love yeah, I, it'll be else. nice. I'd like to get my hands on the Galaxy S3, but I think by the time I'm ready to change my phone, it'll be the 4 or whatever. Yeah. What are you running? 2, Galaxy S2, which was great. Right until ice cream sandwich came, you know, you know, I whined and complained and tweeted every day, and I started like a uh, ice cream sandwich watch. Did they call you and offer you a phone or what? And then they, they. I see it, your tweets to sprint. It, I know it finally came and it sucks. I don't like it. It slowed it down. Yeah, it's the the uh, froyo no gingerbread was snappy and responsive and. You know, a lot of the a lot of the updates that, or a lot of the things that I got with Ice Cream Sandwich that were supposed to be to my advantage, Samsung had almost already overcome with their own software, like panorama, panoramic, uh, you know, uh, camera shots and some of the voice commands and some of those things. Um, and so, so Ice Cream Sandwich went on there, and it's just not as snappy. It, it you can oh, feel so it lag. And, say what, John? Your ice cream sandwich melted. <laughs> yeah. It's all yeah. watered down. It's more like a puddle. So, yeah, Rennie says you got to be careful what you wish for. And I, I do have wishers remorse at this point. I'm like, oh, why? Why did I cheat and look at the Christmas presents? Why did I get what I wanted? <laughs> why? I'm used to not <laughs> If you this was Microsoft, dead. I never would have gotten it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dream. Well, I wonder if... If these Apple guys, if they release an LTE phone, what's that going to do to the Verizon landscape of LTE? Is it going to just crater it? Just crush I, it? I'm, I'm curious. What's Vegas going to be like in January at CES with all these geeks running around with their iPhone 7s? It's with bad LTE. anyways. It's bad anyways, Dave. I mean, there's... Vegas at CES is there's no Wi-Fi. I mean, you're screwed. But you remember we were having good luck with Verizon, and yeah, hey, you were. We sent video. Yeah. With my Verizon iPhone. True. True. Pretty good too. Not not too bad. Yeah. I kept all that, by the way. I have all that footage. You do. I do. Yeah. It's up in the cloud. So I keep everything. It, yeah. it is in the cloud. Walla has it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Our friends over at Walla, you know, I have, you know, they grandfathered me in, right? And I was uh, looking at Walla the other day. I mean, let me open that up real quick here. I have That's the point, Sony Nut. That's the point. Add on how many extra bazillion iPhones to the LTE network that are already out there, you know? So I have 145 gig of space out at Walla that they grandfathered me in on, mm. and I'm using 77% of that. Yeah. So 111 gig. Now, the, when I look at the account, it looks like that 145 is good up until October. Oh, where's that date? Let's say October 3rd, right? So I'm wondering, what are they going to do, Dave? What do you think they're going to do What's when... Pet my account. Bonus, yeah. What do you think they'll do with my account when October third rolls around and I have to go back to the twenty gig or whatever the the base is? And I, I have a hundred. Trust Walla as far as I could throw it. <laughs> Get that but they're shit French. Off, Just tweet something nice about them. I should. You know what? I should tweet to them and say, "Hey, you know what's going to happen? I should yeah. I do a what? What's going to happen?" Tweet because that's right now all the podcasts are stored out there. You have 111 gig of podcast backup stuff. 
and, and that's and you know I still have all the final files are up on the web server. So if it, if I were to lose it all, I would just lose all the raw stuff. Um, and I won't lose it because I have it on the home server too. It's on the home server and then it backs and then it replicates out in the cloud. So. Hmm. I dump all of my audio when I'm done with it. All the edits, all the wave files. You know, it's it'll be an 800 meg wave file by the time I'm done editing. And then once I get it to MP3, I dump it all. Yeah. Well, I only record an MP3, so I don't. They're they're pretty small, but that you know, Vegas was probably a gig by the time we were done worth of, or more. No, it'd be more than that. A couple, maybe 10 gig. Well, yeah, it'd be huge. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of data in there that we of, of all the video and and that's back when we used live stream and it wasn't very efficient. I mean YouTube and, and this is another advantage, right? I mean here's another way we're doing this, right? I've quit keeping video. We do mm -hmm. these podcasts. I cut them off. They go to YouTube. Now I know you download and edit it and put them back up, but I just I slice them off and leave them up there, and they never even come back down. So I'm I'm getting. Yeah, no, I I do the edit in the cloud. Oh, do you edit the front and edit okay. the back? Okay, so you're not bringing it down, adding stuff to it, and then and then it back. I'm done um, with that. You know how I I roll. Yeah, yeah. So um, I don't, I don't edit know. the audio anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, something no. bad in it. It just lives. Yeah, you know why? Why I I've, I've always had this feeling that the the shelf life is too short to you know after two or three weeks. You might get just a handful of listeners that even listen to it past that anyway. So yeah, uh, you guys forgive us, right? When we make mistakes and I read things wrong on the screen, we don't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not use Adler, but I've made enough for a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I used to edit ums and and white space and. Yeah. Clicks yeah. and pops, and I don't even do it no anymore. I think if it's really bad, you go back, right? And I do. And, if I get yeah. good audio from John, then I'm good. Oh, speaking of that, we should cut off the audio here, and I should send yeah, it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop your audio and upload it. I stop mine. It, it, it right after John says bye. I I stop mine. Bye bye. Bye bye. God. Dropbox. Very so you don't have a fan in there, Dave? You don't have any? Uh, I got a ceiling fan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Doesn't sound like it's doing the job. It's just barely running right now. Yeah, I've got to figure something out. It's it's a great room. It's just not just not optimal, you know? Yeah. The room isn't? The room is the, okay. Yeah. The storage is excellent. I mean, I've got all my parts on shelves and boxes and I'm still unloading, as you can see. But uh, is this four ninety four? Yeah, one ninety four. Oh, now listen, this I'm going to hit end broadcast. All right, YouTubers. Thanks, guys. Adios. Hey, yeah, uh, I forgot to do listener of the week. Still you guys can back me up on this. I I wrote it at the very first of the broadcast. I awarded Sony Nut with Listener of the Week. We'll have to um, we'll have to mention that next week. We forgot. I forgot. So thank you, Sony Nut, for joining us. My kids are asking me homework questions over Skype. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dad, can you come help me? Where's your mother? That's what I'm going to say. She can. It's, a math. it's a math question. I've got to go out there. And All right, guys. Yeah. i got to run. i got some yep. things i got to do, and I'm up early tomorrow. Night, yep. John. Night, Sounds Jim. good. Night, Dave. Okay, See you guys. Thanks, See you guys. Bye. Bye.